I'm going to show one of the easiest ways to read from and write to the Arduino pins. And we're going to do that with something called Pi Fermata. So the very first thing that we need to do is go ahead and connect our Arduino. This is just an Arduino Uno. And uh, we're going to connect that with a USB-A connection here. You might have a different type uh, on yours. Uh, and then you'll see that it turns on and starts blinking. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is now go ahead and just open up the Arduino software. So this is available for download. It's free. You can either use the desktop client or the web version of it. And here is um, some firmware that uh, we wrote. And also there's some examples. We're going to go to examples for this one and just use the standard Fermata. So Fermata is like a signature in Italian. And we're just going to uh, you know, translate it. And we're going to go down to standard Fermata. So examples, Fermata, and then standard Fermata. And that will allow us to communicate over serial connection with, uh, and, uh, with Python. OK, we're going to use something called Pi Fermata. OK, once we have this downloaded, we can use uh, just a standard library within Python to be able to control this. Um, now you'll see if we go back here, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's compiling and then it says it's done uploading. And so now you're done. You can close this out and I'll close that one as well. Now when you unplug it and plug it back in, it'll still have that firmware loaded. The standard for model will be on there and uh, it, you don't have to load that again. Okay, now uh, what we want to do is go and connect some devices to these pins. And one thing to do, uh, you could take a little breadboard and, for example, just stick it to the inside of that. Uh, you know, this continues to work here. Is a, this is a rugged Duino. And I like to use sometimes a rugged Duino when I'm doing this just because it has, you know, a little bit better, you know, in terms of the, uh, these little circuit breakers, a little bit more complicated here, but has some nice um, features here that allow us to make mistakes on our wiring and not destroy the Arduino board. So if you're going to be doing your own wiring, sometimes it's good to get a rugged Arduino. It's a little bit more expensive, but um, you uh, don't have to worry about making mistakes and, and doing something to your Arduino. Okay, and then you can wire it up. And, um, you know, here's an example of a little project here with some transistors and thermistors kind of get uh, complicated. Um, but um, you know, I'll just show you a wiring diagram. Uh, here is a, an Arduino with, uh, you know, this is just one heater and one temperature sensor. And, um, you know, if we just go ahead and zoom in on this a little bit, you can see that we're connecting up to some of these pins, like pin three is going to be the one that we connect up to turn on our heater. And then we have uh, analog zero, which is going to be connected up to read the temperature sensor, in this case, a TMP 36. Okay, so just follow this wiring diagram right here if you just want to set up, you know, for example, to read a voltage or to write a, to this uh, transistor right here uh, that's going to act as a heater. Okay, and then um, if you, um, okay, so also we're going to be, in the next step, we're going to be hooking it up with two, okay, we have two uh, little temperature sensors and two heaters, and, uh, and here is the PCB layout for that. You can see we, uh, you know, we got tired of wiring these, and so we chose to have these things printed for us, and then... Uh, make these available. Here's the uh, the temperature uh, heaters right there and also the temperature sensors and they're just bonded together a little heat sink and you can see there's an LED there as well. So if we want to hook up our sensors to our board what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and plug these in. You can see the pins here are just going to fit nicely in here. I'll just fit one side in first and then the other side and then just push them down and that should connect them. Okay, so those are connected. We call that sometimes an Arduino shield that plugs into the top of our Arduino and immediately makes available all of these sensors. So let me just have a simplified diagram here 
that uh, is going to show what's connected to what here. And we have, um, you know, temperatures and, uh, you know, the two temperature sensors. We have analog pin zero. I'll make this just a little bit bigger. Analog pin zero. And then analog pin two is going to be our second temperature. And then we have two heaters. We have digital pin three, which is heater one that's connected to temperature one. And then digital pin five, which is then uh, right next to temperature two. So heater two and temperature two go together. And then digital pin nine is going to be our LED. Okay, so let's just, uh, we have our standard Fermata loaded. And what we're going to do now is, um, you know, you either build this yourself or you can get one. Um, here's how you get one of these. Um, just come to the apmotor.com slash heat.htm and then scroll down and come down to get temperature control lab okay and down at the bottom it'll have some uh, details about the kit that this comes with but let's go ahead and just use standard Fermata to do this um, you know we're, we can uh, just open up a new Python script and I'll just kind of start from scratch here so that uh, you know, I'll just call this test dot and move that out of the way. It'll be test dot py dot text. Couldn't get rid of the dot txt or open up a new Python IDE editor, you know, something like Jupyter Notebook or Spider. Um, or you can use IDLE to edit that. Now I'm going to be using Python uh, 3.6 for this. And but you could also use Python uh, 2.7. So I'm going to just do from uh, PyFermata. That's the package that we're going to be using here. We'll import Arduino uh, dot, let me get this out just a little bit more so we can see it flashing. And then we'll also import the utility there. Um, and if we run this, you'll see that it, there's going to be an error because PyFermata is not installed. So one way that we could do this from a Python script is, uh, you know, we can just do try. And then if there's an error, it probably means it's not installed. So we'll do accept and then we'll import pip and then pip dot main. And we'll go ahead and install it right from the Python script. Okay, using pip. And then we'll import it. Okay, so there it is. We've imported PyFermata. And let's just run it again. It's going to go ahead and collect that and it will install it for us. So it's every time in the future, it's just going to, uh, you know, import it like that. But if you transfer this to somebody else's computer and they don't have it, it'll automatically install it for you. Okay, so that's just the first thing to get uh, PyFermata. Now we want to connect to the board. And uh, this one is just going to be equals Arduino. And then you need to put in, um, you know, the port that it's on. And one way in Windows to get that is just type, uh, you'll go to Device Manager and hit Enter. And then you can see what port it's on. In this case, it's a COM3. Okay. And then with Linux or, or uh, Mac OS, you need to go to, um, you know, just look in your uh, dev and then dev folder and then you'll see um, the driver or the port that it's on, the USB port. Okay, and then put that there. In this case, it's COM3 for Windows. Okay, and then uh, what we want to do now is let's just go ahead and uh, we're going to start this, use this util to start an iterator. And I'll do util.iterator and I'll do board. And this allows us to read from it uh, multiple times and I'll start my iterator. Okay, like that. Okay, and then, uh, then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just read the voltage of this first one. You'll see the analog pin zero. That's my very first one. And I'll just go ahead and uh, do board uh, get pin and I'll do analog uh, 
This is going to be the uh, pin zero, and that will be an input. Okay, so there's my very first uh, read. And then if I want to read the value, I'll just do tv1.read, and I'll print this. So let's see if this works, and we'll run it and just get the voltage. This is going to come back as a 0 to 1 um, instead of a 0 to 5. It just scales everything uh, for us. And let's see, I think I've got a problem here with... Uh, Sometimes I just need to put a pause in here. Uh, just give it a second to, I'll just import time. And then after I uh, create this iterator, I'll do, um, you know, instead of just making it run right away, I'll do time uh, dot sleep and just let it pause for one second. And somehow that helps it initialize, I found and then uh, you can read the voltage, okay? And so you just need to do that right at the start. So it doesn't say none, but it'll give you a value. Okay, and there's the voltage between zero and one. So if you want to um, then convert that into a temperature, then we're gonna just uh, do a conversion that's gonna be from the, uh, you know, just the, if you look at the documentation of this, it's actually gonna, you know, convert it back. The voltage comes back. Um, it's actually zero to 1024. Okay, that's 10 bits, um, and it's going to be different levels. And uh, what we're going to do is is that's going to be converted by the pi fermata into a zero to one. Okay. Um, so some of the other conversions you might see like a 1024 in there, but that's just we don't use that in here where you divide it by 1024 because it's already scaled for us. And then it assumes, I think, 5 volts as the max, um, even if you use a lesser voltage, okay? Um, it just scales at 0 to 1 based on what the voltage is and then, uh, you know, 0 to 5. Um, in this case, so I'm going to go in minus 500 and then divide by 10, and that's going to give us the... Uh, temperature in degrees Celsius. Okay, so there I have my first temperature sensor. Let's see what the temperature is in, in degrees Celsius. We can also convert that into Fahrenheit if we wanted to. But right now it's 18.9 degrees uh, Celsius. Okay, so there's our first uh, read right there. So we'll read uh, from the uh, pin zero. And then we converted it to uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, now we want to write something. Now we're going to write uh, to that heater. Let's do heater number one. We'll write to, uh, you know, pin three there, the digital pin three. And so what we want to do here is I'll just set up heater one. And we'll do board and then get pin. And then this is going to be digital pin 3, and then we'll have a P there for pulse width modulated. And that means that I can have any value between 0 and 1, and even though it only outputs um, zeros or 1s, if I have something, for example, like 60% or 0.6 in there, then it will have that cycle fast, but it'll be on about 60% of the time. Okay, so there I have my heater 1. And then um, let's go ahead and just turn on the heater, and I'll turn it to, on to 80%. Okay, and so what I'm going to have here is H1, and then in this case to turn on the heater, I'll do a write instead of a read, and in this case I'll do 0 0.8, so it'll be on 80%. And then what I'll do is have this on for, um, let's say, 20 seconds. We'll do 30 seconds, so let it heat up just a little bit more. And then we'll also read the uh, temperature again after we um, turn on the heater for 20 for 30 seconds. Okay, and then what I want to do is um, I'll go ahead and write a zero. I'll turn off the heater. Okay, and then the last thing that I need to do, I actually should be doing this, uh, should have been doing this before as well, but I need to do board.exit. 
and that will close everything out, close the serial connection to the board. Okay, and uh, so here we go. We just, big overview, we created an input, analog input at pin zero, a digital um, you know, output, a write to pin three, and made that as a pulse width modulated signal. Um, and then we slept for a second, just allowed everything to get set up. And then we read the temperature, we wrote the heater, um, this is our 80% on, and then we'll read the temperature again. So let's go ahead and just run this now, and, uh, and then see the temperature if it rises after a little bit. Okay, so it's initially at 18.9, now the heater's on to 80%, and you know what, I forgot to do something. I'm gonna hook up my heater first, because right now my heater has no power. So it should be about the same temperature right now as it was before. So let me just find my heater. And then what I'll do is I'll just hook that up and uh, here it is, there's my heater over here. Okay, so I have a power supply right here and I will connect this uh, five volt power supply right here to this heater. Okay, so there's a couple different ports on here. One is right down here, that powers the Arduino. Um, itself, but we don't want to do that one. We want to plug it in right here at the top, and that's actually going to give us power to the transistor. Okay, and then I'll take this and go ahead and plug it in um, to a power supply, and then let's try that one again. We'll just um, do it with the heater as well, and actually let's do one other thing here just while we're um, thinking about this as well. We'll go ahead and do the uh, Let's go ahead and just turn on the LED as well. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do this, and this will be our LED, and that's gonna be digital pin nine. Okay, and I don't think we need to turn that on very much, but let's go ahead and just do a for loop here for I in range 10 and we'll just see what different values we can get for LED. And uh, let's just go ahead and do LED right, and then we'll do I divided by 100. Okay, so it'll do it, um, you know, tenth, and then uh, scale it down. We'll hopefully be able to see it go um, up a little bit. This will actually go from, uh, you know, one or zero to nine. And so we'll see that turn on. Actually, we can go a little bit further. I'll go up to 30 there. Okay, and let me go back here so we can see that. Okay, so we should see at some point the LED turn on and get a little bit brighter. Okay, as we had that uh, you know pulse width modulated value that is um, you know making that uh, turn on, and then it'll turn on the heater. 80% and then we'll wait a little bit of time and then uh, 30 seconds and then we'll see the temperature again it'll read it again after that time period okay so let's see uh, what happens here we just have to wait the 30 seconds and there you can see it went up to 26.25 and so this uh, is just a little bit hotter now if uh, you, know, you don't want to touch it um, if it's very hot uh, but you know with the message there do not touch heaters but uh, in this case, it's only you know 26.5. You can see the LED is on there as well. Okay, so you can either wire this up yourself or um, you know use one of these kits that are available. Uh, here is the code right here, where we just you know loaded uh, Pi Fermata. We had to pip install that if we don't have that, and then uh, imported time connected to the board, and you can do that with Linux, Mac, or Windows. I set up this iterator, and then I um, set up the different pins as read or write, and uh, you can see the numbers are analog zero, digital pin three, digital pin nine, and then I turned on the LED. I just let it um, you know, go up very quickly, up to 30% output. I guess I should have put a little bit of a pause there, and uh, you know, maybe something like this to make it um, you know, show the increments. 0, 2, something like that. Um, and then we, and I'll run that again just to show that. 
Okay. And then we had the uh, read pin zero, just did the conversion, wrote the heaters, uh, read pin zero again uh, to report the temperature, and then turned off the heater and then exit. So there you go. You have uh, Pi Fermata, just a basic uh, introduction on how to read or write values to the Arduino with um, you know, with uh, Python. Now the other option is you can write your own firmware and uh, you know, in processing uh, language. And I have that included in the download for this lab. If you'd like to use that as well, we um, you know, it simplifies it a little bit. I'll just show you that again. Um, here is the page, and then if you come down here to some of the starting files right here, and I'll just save that. I'll show you the INO file that comes with this lab by default, but you can also use the uh, PyFermata if you'd like to instead. Okay, um, here it is inside the Python TC lab, and then if you go to the INO file, you'll see the custom firmware that we've written. Now this is not the standard Fermata, this is the one that comes with the lab, and it's loaded on if you get the Python version of the lab, and uh, it does all of the you know conversions to degrees Celsius here in um, you know in the script. And every time you read a temperature, it also reads it 10 times and then averages those just to help reduce any of the natural variability of those. So if you read the temperature. Okay, um, and here is the heater as well, heater two. That's how you would change the value on the heater. Okay, so that's just a brief tutorial on Pi Fermata and also just a, a brief example of how to use some custom firmware as well if you want to make that yourself.